fast lane here. Today we're going to be installing the big bore kit for the 49cc scooters, or they call them 50cc scooters. In this box here, I got the full kit: the exhaust, the uh, downpipe, the uh, big bore cylinder, sleeved, the head, the cam, the cam gear, the rocker arms, you name it, everything. CDI and the uh, coil pack. So I'm going to be showing you how to install this whole entire kit. You can get it on eBay for about $170 shipped. Um, there's other ways to tweak these uh, 49cc scooters. You can advance the timing and you know adjust your air fuel screw. But uh, when it comes down to uh, torque and top end and just getting out there as soon as you hit the throttle and you're gone, you're going to want to go with the 100cc big bore kit. All right, so we're gonna go on this panel right here where your feet go, and we're just gonna pull up on it. This is installing the CDI, the uh, emissions control, the computer, control device, ignition. So you're just gonna take out one, two, three, four screws. Now I already installed mine, but I'm just gonna show you how to do it. Now you're just gonna pull up on it, and if you can't quite get out, keep backing out the screws until it comes out. And here's the control unit right here. Now I already put mine in, but all it is is just plugs. All right, and I'm going to give you a closer shot of this so you can really see what I'm talking about. All right, on this plug right here, it's very simple. You just pry it right here. You pry it right here, upward. This one, you're going to pry them all, and you're going to flip it around. You pry this one, this one, and then this one. And as you're prying, you're pulling, and it'll pop out. And there's no way to reverse this and put it backwards because there's two here, and then there's four here, and it's one plug. And it can only go one way. You can't turn it this way because the two would be on the four side. So it's self-explanatory. Next step, we're just going to put our key in. We're going to unlock our seat. We're going to lift it up. And we don't need to take out this uh, lid right here because we're going to pull out all four of these 10 millimeters. We got a 10 here, a 10 here, and two 10s down there. So let's go ahead and take those off. Now that that's all off, all we're going to do is just pull up on this piece until everything pops. Hopefully you didn't lose screws like I did and bolts. And just set it aside. Now that we have plenty of room to work in here and pull the head off and all that, I'm going to show you the first things we're going to want to disconnect before we go ahead and get into the real engine work. The next step is to loosen up the throttle cable with this 12 millimeter nut. Just take the back one off. Just loosen it up. You're going to go towards yourself if you're on the left side of the bike. Sit it while you're sitting on it. And just loosen it up. And then we got to take this front one all the way off. I don't know if you can see it. Can't really see the camera that well myself. So we're going to back this front one all the way off and just keep going until it comes off and lands on the cable. Then we're going to pull it back. We're going to push down on the throttle here. Open the throttle. And I'm going to see if I can give you a better shot. So you back the nut off right here all the way onto the cable. Now we're going to push the throttle down all the way. We're going to take the cable and we're going to pull it until it gets on that line and we can pull the cable out of the throttle. There we go. Just like that. Back it out and then we're going to pull this back. Now mine's a little bent. That's why I'm having a hard time. And we're all done with that. Okay, so some people may need some pliers, um, but these are very easy. I'm just going to pull this vacuum line off. Put the clamp on there. Pull this one off. Don't lose the little circle clamps. And we're going to pull this one off right here. Okay, now all the vacuum lines are off. We're going to go ahead and remove this with two 10 millimeters right here. But right before we do, we're just going to disconnect it from the back part right here with a Phillips head screwdriver. All right, now that that's done, we're going to take these two 10 millimeters out and the whole carb, we're going to set it back here.
All right, we're just gonna pull up and set it back. Oh, you got some fuel in there, by the way. Might wanna pinch the lines off, but if you can just set it back level, you shouldn't have to worry about it. We're gonna work on taking this case off right here. So we got uh, some, looks like they're 5 sixteenths. So we got one here. We got one down at the bottom. You just want to find all the bolts go into this plastic case right here. We got one here, here. We're taking off this whole plastic case. The uh, block number, engine code for this, there's two of them. Um, there's two different numbers, and a lot of people don't explain it, but the 139QMB, I believe it is. I could be wrong. Don't mark me down on that. I'll have to look real quick. Try to pull this off. And then there's a 1P39QMB. You see here. Yeah, the one. This is the 1P39QMB, and the 139QMB without the P. The only difference is is the valve length. Uh, the 1Ps are 69 millimeters long, and the 139s are 64 millimeters long. So this kit comes with the rocker arms. So when you're installing this kit, you don't have to worry about valve length with the piston hitting it or anything like that because the rocker arms adjust to the valves. Okay, now that we got that off, we're just gonna pull our ground wires and set them aside. We're gonna pull our spark plug, and as you can see, or not spark plug, but we're gonna pull our uh, plug wire. And as you can see, this is the new uh, coil pack. Um, we got two more over here, and I didn't think they went all the way through, but they do. There's two more on this side, so you can take a Phillips head screwdriver for these ones. Should come out now. There we go. Give it a little bend. It's not like we're not like I'm gonna be reusing it, but that's all there is to it. So the next step is we gotta get rid of this bottom shroud too. Because this whole head's gonna come off. So what we're gonna do is we got that one screw right there. Right down in there. We gotta take that one out. Okay, so we got one more screw to take out on the fan shroud, and you can see this is the side of the bike where the kickstart is. And if you look right here, you can see that one last bolt right there. We just got to remove that, and then the bottom of the heat, uh, heat sink shroud will come off. But right before we do that, we're going to go under here. And I'm trying to see exactly what you guys are seeing. So let me see here. Where is it? Um, here we are. Okay. If you look right here, this is the exhaust manifold. Okay, we gotta take those two, those two bolts out. Um, I believe they're 10 millimeter. We gotta take those out and drop them. Drop the exhaust so we can get this shroud off. I just removed these two 10 millimeter bolts from here and right here. And also the two 10 millimeters, they look just like this from underneath the pipe, just follow the pipe and take the two millimeter, 10 millimeters out. And now the whole pipe should drop right down. So as you can see, that's what we took out right there, the two 10 millimeters. Let's see here. There we go. And the whole exhaust just come right out. In order to take this shroud off, we're just gonna take this 5 sixteenths out and this one right here and then the shroud will come right off. Now we're going to keep this shroud so we're going to be replacing it back on so don't toss it. I'm just going to move this out of the way. Now we probably might be able to sneak it. No, we're going to take out these 5 sixteenths. These are 5 sixteenths and then these are 10 millimeter right here. So let's take this bracket off. I would just personally probably actually take it back. You only need to take this 5 sixteenths off right here because these two are just on the shroud. The uh, dust cover kick guard. Alright. Okay, so if you're looking for your timing mark, it's this right here. 
I'm gonna give you a better shot so you really can see what I'm talking about because you don't want to mess this up. Get yourself a 12 millimeter wrench or socket, push it on there, and now you're gonna turn it, this T right here. Now you wanna line that up. Right there is uh, your top dead center. It's gonna be a little wobbly, but that's all right. So there's your top dead center. And just leave it right there. Now we're gonna take the head off, or the valve cover, and make sure our top dead center marks are good on our cam. Now it's time to remove the valve cover. And we're gonna take uh, 5 sixteenths. And we got four, one here, one here, one down here, and one on the side. Here's what top dead center looks like on the cam. You have a hole here, and then a hole right there. And they gotta be lined up with this piece flush. So if you had a roller like this, you want the two dots to be lined up here, and here. So the dot needs to be lined up here, the hole, and the hole needs to be here. So it has to be flush. So once that's done, then you're on top dead center. And uh, we're going to go ahead and just loosen up the cam. Take a 10 millimeter wrench. We're going to break all four of these. We got all these 10 millimeter bolts off. Now we're just going to pop it. Be careful, you don't want to damage the uh, aluminum. Just give it a little lift. And that's it. Now the can will come out free. Just set that aside. Gonna have to pull the whole timing tensioner out. Now you can just pull the chain right off, just like that, and the whole cam comes right out. That's all done. Now we just pull the head right off. You might have to tap it. Before I do, I'm gonna take the rest of this heat shield out. Oh, there we go. All right, get rid of that thing. Before you pull this, you got two more 5 sixteenths. They're right here and right here. There we go. Now the entire head should just come right off. Give it a little tap. And there we go whole cylinder head. Don't forget the head gasket. I believe the kit comes with a brand new head gasket, which I'm pretty sure they do. Set that aside. Don't forget to keep your spark plug. So I'm going to give you an idea how big this piston is compared to that one. Alright, now step three. We're just going to smack this loose. Go ahead and pull out the guide. Little guides. All right. Get a little tap. And just pull straight up. Make sure that your guide you turn it, if you look right here, you want to turn it sideways or just pull it out. It just guides the uh, timing chain. And there you have it. A little small 49cc scooter. Alright, so you're going to come in to the side and you just want to pull out that piece right there. If you can see it, you're just going to grab it 
and pull it or pop it out with a screwdriver. Now it went somewhere, I heard it, but I'm not worried about it. Kit comes with new ones. And now you're just gonna push the wrist pin out from the other side. You can see that. I'm pushing it out. <clears throat> Get a screwdriver. Lift it up. And just shove the wrist pin right out. It's kind of hard, it's a little slippery. There we go. And the piston should come right off. Just like that, that's it. All right, here's some of the new parts in the kit. Comes with the new uh, cam and cam gear with the bearings, brand new. <clears throat> here's the difference between a 100cc piston and a 50. It's a big difference. I mean, these 50s are a joke. So tiny. But the heads are pretty much identical. If you look here, the only difference between these two heads is I can stick my fingers like this, they're the same width, same everything. They just mill out this part right here where the dish is. Let's have a look at this. It's a big difference. Here's the original one. And here's the 100cc. You got the 50cc and then the 100cc right here. Big difference. And last but not least, we got the muffler and the pipe. Now let's have a look at this muffler. It has a silencer on it. You can take out the silencer right here. But I'll probably leave it in just for now. And all together, it's a very nice muffler. Heavy duty, feels great, real clean. And then we got all the gaskets. Comes with all the gaskets. I believe this is an oil pump. They gave you an aftermarket oil pump. Or it's probably the same oil pump. I'm probably not going to change out the oil pump. I don't see how it could be any different than the OEM one. You still got the same crank and everything in there. Uh, here's the pipe, the down pipe, real nice. Um, it's, I can't say that it's any bigger than the original one, but the muffler definitely is a straight pipe. So. Also comes with other gaskets. Not quite sure where these ones would go. Almost looks like this is like pretty much every gasket for the entire engine. I also have the transmission gasket right here for when you're changing out the uh, roller weights and all that. Comes with a brand new gasket there. All right, now the first step to putting this piston back on is it says IN, which is intake. You see it right there. And you want that facing on top, okay, up top. You don't want it facing down, because down is exhaust. We all know that because the exhaust pipe comes out the bottom. So, your intake's gonna be on top, but before we do that, we're gonna put our piston rings on, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. Okay, so in order to install these piston rings, you're gonna have to put this ring in first. With a car, you don't have to do it because it doesn't have the extra mesh in it, but, so we're gonna put it all the way at the bottom, just like that. Now we're going to take one of our two, black and silver, they're real thin, they're the thinnest rings in the packet. And we're going to put it just like that. And just like that. Now these gaps, when you put this next one on, don't keep them like that, have them separated because that'll let combustion out on all the rings we can't do that so I'm gonna put it on the opposite side it's called clocking your rings check out my other YouTube video how to install piston rings properly the easy way go to my channel and look for it and here we go and that's that 
So that's that ring. Now we're going to install the second oil ring. And on my video, other one, I should mention that they have numbers. Now if they have numbers, go ahead and put the numbers on top, just for a reference. Okay, so let's find out where our gaps are. There's a gap there. And a gap there. So now we're just going to go in the middle of it. Now, exhaust and intake, I'm going to put them parallel. So I'm going to spin these around where they're half and half. See, here's the one here. And I'm going to put this one like this. And then I'm going to put the other ring the opposite of it. So here's how we do this. You get one in. There we go. Well, these are toughies. No, oh, we don't want that. Let me pop that back out. Sorry, I'm trying to do it on camera. It's kind of difficult. I usually could do them a lot faster if I didn't have a camera in front of my face. All right. And, oh crap, slip. There we go. We're on the second one. See that? So now, we're, we can clock them last. I'll show you how to clock them. I'm just going to put this other ring on. So I'm going to put this gap over here. And now with this one, just put the numbers on top. There it is, the number right there. Same procedure. Bend one side down, spin it around. Just like that. That's how you install piston rings. And now I'm going to put the gap for the intake side on the right, and then I'm going to put the bottom ring the opposite of it. Just like that, so they're opposite. And then on just making sure that the other rings, there's the opening in that one and the opening in that one. So we're good. Okay, now when we install it, the intake side is going to be facing like this. So we're going to install it just like this with the intake facing up. All right, so we got our piston. We got our clips, our wrist pin clips. And here's our wrist pin. Go ahead and rip this open. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to hold it like this with the intake up, and I'm going to put the pin in first on this side so I could slide it in. Okay, here's the trick. Put it just like that, hold your thumb under it, and squeeze it in. So. I'm going to do it off camera like I said, but do it just like this and squeeze it in. See how I got it? Just like that. Alright, so as you can see, this is how it's going to be in there. Just like that. Make sure it's in the groove all the way around. Alright, now make sure the intake side's up. Grab your wrist pin. Lift up. Slide the wrist pin through the one side. Try to line up the uh, rod. And just like that. There we go. Now it's in the rod. Now we have to put the pin on this side just like we did on the other side. Now it's time to put the head gasket on. Or not head gasket, but the uh, sleeve gasket for the cylinder. And make sure you get it right the first time so you don't have to keep putting it on there. So the long end down and this little loop is going to be up. Let's go just like this. You can bend these a little bit to make them fit just right so you don't rip the gasket. Just like that. Get your timing chain. You're going to feed that up through the hole in between here. like that, grab your piston, lift it, and there you go, all the way down. 
And that's it for that. Now, check your uh, rings, make sure they're spaced out right, mine are spaced out. And a lot of people are wondering, well, how are you gonna get the piston rings on the sleeve? Well, with these 50cc scooters on the cylinder right here, they have it dished out a little bit. If you can see that, yep. They, they dish it out just a little bit so it has a lip so it kind of compresses the um, rings where when you're building a regular car engine it's not like that you have to have a ring compressor okay so we're all ready but don't forget right before you put this together make sure you have your guides in and I would slide them on first you're gonna find out which way this goes which it goes down like this long and down and you're gonna put them in so we got a guide here and a guide, I believe a guide, guide there, yep. Okay, so that means they're on this side. I'm gonna take this and run them all the way down and get it in between the head gasket. There we go. Got one and then grab the other one. I would even put them in first and see which ones go in smoother. Flip them around. All right, so this side goes on smoother. Slide that down. Make sure it's on your under. Make sure it's through your head gasket. And now, make sure it's real clean. And take your head or your uh, sleeve cylinder. Grab your timing chain. We're gonna lift it up, feed it through. Okay, so we got our timing chain through there. Slide it down a little bit. And just kind of put the timing chain maybe on that little bolt right there for now. Now you're gonna need to lift up the piston. I'm gonna try to keep my head out of the camera, but can't promise anything. And we got them on there. You just kind of wiggle it. Go easy. Do not force it like crazy. It's going to be a little tough, don't get me wrong. But you don't want to break the rings. You break them, it's over. Alright, now we got to feed this timing chain through the front. Man, it's kind of hard. Alright, there we go. And now slide it all the way back. kind of wiggle it, wiggle it side to side, and it goes on real smooth. Now take your new cylinder head and figure out which way you're going to put it on, which of course is the uh, timing chain side. It's the only way it can go. It can't go that way or that way. If you need a reference, the longer studs go up, or the bigger valve is facing up, which is the intake side. Okay, so we got that. Now, what you want to do is take your guides. They call them shims, if anybody needs to know what they're really called. Um, and look in here and see which ones they go in. That one goes in that one, that one goes in that one. Now, you don't want to put them in there because that will damage the head gasket when it comes down. So, obviously, a crisp pattern, so one goes here. Slide it through. Another one goes here on the bottom. Slide it through. Now take your head gasket and uh, get it lined up the exact same way, just like this. Squeeze these little head bolts or studs and uh, just slide them down. So you get them over the threads. There we go. Slide your timing chain through it. All right, we got one more thing. We got to take our guide because mine came out. I'd clean it up in case you got any kind of grit or sand on it. You don't want that getting in your oil. All right, and it 
goes just like this. This part right here is up higher. So you're going to pull your time chain out. Just slide it all the way to the back. Just like that. And now we're ready to put the cylinder head on. Right before you put this head on, we gotta pull the gasket off too. You gotta put this on right before the gasket. I wish I would have caught it before, but I didn't, so sorry about that. But at least you guys will know not to put your gasket on first without doing this. Okay, so before we put the head gasket on, <coughs> you see these notches right here? They have to go in and lock into the cylinder. If you look right here, right here, I have no idea if you can see it. I'm gonna try to zoom in. Okay, if you look right here, you see that indentation before you put the head gasket on? That's where these go. There you go. And just lay your chain on the guides and you should be able to scoop it up. Now slide it. You might have to lift the chain guide just a hair. Yep. Just like that. Get it flush. No force or nothing. And that's it. Now with this kit, it came with rocker arms. Because of the difference, they're actually, if you look, the new rocker arm right here is a lot smaller than the original. See? See the difference? quite a bit uh, shorter. These don't unscrew, but they twist. And if on this one, if you look, when you twist it in the hole, it lines up the bolt if you don't have them twisted right. But I turned them so they come loose and smacked it on the ground a couple of times. All right, so I almost got this one out right here. It's kind of a bear. Don't grab this right here because that's where the rocker arm rides on. But man, is it a bear. You gotta really muscle it out. So you can see, this one is coming out like this. So I'm gonna take this one and stick it just like that. Same way. That's it for that one. I got it on there. I'm gonna put uh, this one on there. Uh, as far as you see how it's got the solid steel, you're gonna take your screwdriver, you're gonna put it in there, and you're gonna turn it until you can see right through the hole. See that? And that'll lock it in. Got this one out. Now we're just going to stick this one like that. And we're going to push the rocker arm in. Just like that. Tap it all the way in. Same procedure. You're going to turn the bolt until you can see right through it. Now on this one, it's on this side. Right before you put your cam in your... Uh, Rocker arms in, you want to put the guides. You're going to slide them in there. There's only two spots they can go. And right here, across from each other. Now for the installation of the new cam. We're going to get the timing chain. We're going to set the cam in just like this. And remember, make sure you're still at top dead center on the uh, crank. And you want the big eye facing up and the two dots facing flush with the cylinder head. Just like this. And you're going to turn the cam to the right spot. And you can double check your work after you get the chain on. There we go. Now we're on to installing the rocker arm assembly. Make sure that the E is facing down and the X is up or whichever. And if you can't figure it out, make sure that this port is on the top left side because this is an oil port and uh, that's just the way it goes. So make sure you get it right. Alright, so 
Just put it on just like this, E on the bottom, X up top. And make sure you got the cam in its socket. And you're just gonna line it up. Pull your rocker arms back. There we go. And now it's time to put on the uh, head bolts. Put one washer on each one. Now everybody has different torque specs for this, but I'm going to hand torque them just because it's a little 100cc. I'm not really uh, worried about it too much. And I'm going to start as an X pattern. And that's pretty much good for me. Got them all torqued down. Okay, now you're set the top dead center on the crank. It just says T with a line in it. Set that up. You should already be there. Now we're going to take the uh, rocker arms. And you're going to want to get uh, Craftsman or any kind of feeler gauge. It has all kinds of gauges in it. And you're going to open it up, and we want the intake and exhaust set to five thousandths of an inch. Now that's really thin, so go to the thin side. We got two, three, four, there's five. All right, we're going to close it all up, and we want five thousandths. So what you're going to do is you're going to loosen these lock nuts, you're going to pull it back and stick the feeler gauge between it and turn it in until it gets a little tight. Alright. You want to be able to go in and out. In between the valve and that. Now you're going to put it on there and you're going to tighten the nut. And I believe they're eight millimeters. Yep. Some people have required torque probably like, actually take it back, it's not an eight, it's a nine millimeter, my bad. So now I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna tighten it. And hopefully I can still get it out. And that's it. Now you're gonna do the same to the uh, rocker underneath on the bottom for the exhaust. Let's put on the timing tensioner. If you look right here on this timing tensioner, hold on, let me focus in. Push this sprint clip, push it in, slide it all the way up. And then we're gonna take, put the bolt and spring in there and it'll push it back out to the required uh, tension. So we just set it right there like that. Take our bolts. And just hand tighten them on there. And now we're going to take the bigger bolt with the spring is right here and make sure it springs on there and just shove it down in there and tighten it if you can hear that clicking that was the uh, adjustable tensioner tightening up to where it needs to be and um, we got a 10 millimeter on here Nice and snug. Okay, we have our valve lash adjustment already finished. Five mil, five thousandths of an inch here, and five thousandths of an inch on the exhaust and intake, both of them. Now we're going to put our uh, valve cover on. Can only go one way. And we're going to take our bolts. 
It's already got the seal on it. Almost forgot our two long uh, head bolts. They go right in the side, right here on the side, the long ones. They just run right straight down, just like that. Thank goodness they're on the outside, right? Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to change out the jet on this carburetor today because I got to drill it out. These Chinese scooter ones, they don't have any bolts, as you see right there. They're just screwed in and cut bolts. So I'm going to drill them out, unthread them. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but they do this so that you can't uh, ever change your jet. But not worried about it because uh, I'll be changing it out later. Um, I'll do a video on that. All right, got the carb all hooked back up in our electric choke. I'm gonna take the gasket. Just wanna line it up. See which way gives the hole better line up. Let's see here, I'm not sure. It could be that way. Can't go wrong with high temp RTV. Just like that, we're gonna set it back on. Put a little more on the original one. And set it back down on there. like that. And that's it for that. Now we're going to tighten up this back one. We're going to put it on there. Next step is we're going to put on our uh, spark plug. Screw it in. It on there until you hear it click. I'm gonna back off one of these real quick without just so I can put the ground wires on so I don't forget. Alright got the battery put all in and the CDI put back in. I'm just buttoning it up trying to speed things up. Um, I didn't use the exhaust and muffler because it didn't fit. I just used the factory for now. I'm going to end up probably shipping it back. So that's kind of a bummer. So I didn't get to install my jet today or uh, my exhaust and the rollers. Okay, so buttoned up the vacuum lines, um, put the uh, throttle cable on, and pretty much patched up everything. Um, you've already seen me take it apart. I had to speed things up a little bit. Um, if you're having um, trouble starting it, adjust your idle screw. And uh, we're going to give it a first start real quick.